Hi everyone and welcome to the Sleepy Fox Yarn Podcast. This is a podcast about knitting, crocheting, the yarn I'm hoarding, um, or any occasional other crafts I want to share with you all. Um, I am your host, Holly. I live in North Carolina with my family and this is episode 41, guys. We have made it to 41. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. <coughs> I'm just coming out of being sick, so I don't sound very weird, but there will probably be an occasional cough or, <clears throat> you know, in here somewhere. Sorry, I'm just, my hair is just, it's bugging me. Um, so yes, this is um, episode 41, and so yeah, um... I was gonna say something and then I totally lost it because I got distracted by my hair. So I will just do a little what's in my cup segment. I never really do this because half the time I it's typically the same thing it's just coffee um, but it is in my coffee scream and sugar mug because let's be honest we're in the middle of August we are so close to fall and honestly it's fall in my house. I don't care. Um, <laughs> I am just ignoring the heat and I'm looking at the leaves starting to change already on the trees and I'm like, you know what? It's fall. In my mind, I'm done. Um, but <laughs> I wanted to welcome all new subscribers and welcome back for all the OG subscribers, all the ones that have stuck with me for so long. Thank you. I appreciate you all. Um, yeah, I think that was it. So back to what's in my cup. So I found this New England coffee brand and they had blueberry cobbler coffee, which let me tell you guys, so good. Typically, I don't do flavored coffee unless it's like caramel and that's it. Um, that's like the only flavoring I really do. Um, but I saw this and I was a little intrigued and plus it was like $4 for a bag and I was like, you know what? I need coffee. Let's try something new. I just put some vanilla creamer in it and oh my gosh, guys, it tastes like blueberry gobbler <laughs> with coffee which sounds weird but it is really good i also got their um can't remember if it was their breakfast blend or their house blend but it was a medium roast and it was far too acidic for me i was just like whoo like opening the bag you could smell the acidity okay hold <laughs> sorry i was having like an inception moment so i'm looking at me but then i looked at the tv screen but i'm getting like a ref I know my reflection's not on that TV screen, but because of where I'm sitting, I'm getting a reflection of myself on the screen, and it looks like it's on the big screen, which is really weird. I'm sorry. Totally sidetracked. Um, but yes, so Blueberry Cobbler New England Coffee is in my cup today. Um, it is actually the afternoon already. Yeah, it's almost 2. It's 1.44 right now. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I got a lot to show you guys. I, so literally it's been three weeks since I podcasted and the first two weeks I did absolutely nothing. I got nothing done because I was super focused on getting the Halloween advents together, um, which they're almost done. I literally just have to tie the ribbon on and put them in the big boxes um, and basically just slap a label on it. And that's it. I'm done. Um, and those ship out on September, in September, in the beginning. Um, we do have, we'll just do a little shop update real quick. We do have the September um, Yarn and Candle Club going, which pre-orders end next, this coming Friday. Um, so if you are interested in getting a nine ounce candle, soy candle, um, Basically, I know you can't see it, but this candle back here um, is basically the size you'd be getting, which, like I said, you can't really see it. Um, but it is like, I guess when you go to the store and you look at the candle sizes, they're not votives. 
they're not um, like the little tiny f two to four ounce ones that you see and then they're not like the big ones the, they're the ones that are in between so I mean it's a good size candle and it lasts a long time um, I can't remember the um, scents you have to choose from I know it was falling leaves and you get to choose the scent you would like um come on brain work falling leaves was one of them and i believe the other one was oh harvest berry so very fall smelling be oh they smell amazing oh my gosh they smell amazing and you will get a 100 gram skein mystery color way um, so that is the Falling Candle Club that will end on Friday and the Christmas Advents I've pushed back again because I'm like seeing how fast I got down the Halloween Advents doing the Christmas ones although there are more skeins to die um, I don't need two months or at that point it was three months to get it done and I'm like that's Far too long, seeing as I basically got the Halloween Advents done in about two weeks. So, yeah. Like I said, they're done. It's just a matter of packaging, which the hard part of the packaging has been done. <laughs> oh, excuse me. So, yeah. I've pushed that back to September 1st being the cutoff date. So, if you've been waiting and you would like to get your hands on some Advent goodness for Christmas, um, by all means go for it. <laughs> um, and also we are having a 25% off sale um, in the shop. I know there was a deadline but I can't remember what it was um, because I don't write anything down. <laughs> oh yes. And oh. I am falling behind on autumn colorways. Autumn colorways will be coming soon. I was hoping having them died last weekend. I came down sick. That didn't happen. Um, and I'm hoping possibly, sorry, my hair is just so frizzy because we've been having storms like crazy the last, I would say like the last four days has just been rain. Rain and thunderstorms. Three, three days, four days, I don't know. So my hair is frizzy guys. Um, so yeah. That is what's going down in the shop. 25% off all skeins except the Advent and the Club. Other than that, everything is 25% off. Yes. Um, I'm so weird. I'm sorry. So, let's get into the fun stuff. The reason why you came. So, um, FOs. I have FOs. And let me tell you, I am so excited about this first one because it's been on my needles forever and I am just so happy to have it off the needle. Oh, pair of socks. Oh, it has been so long since I've completed a pair of socks. Um, so, as, so when I last showed you this sock, I had stopped to do the heel flap and gusset, um, which I had just started the heel flap. And um, yeah, so I have finished this entire sock. I am so excited. I was like, you know what? I'm on the foot. I'm going to keep pushing. I'm going to just go for it and get it finished. And I did. I got it finished. So. This is in my yarn, Sleepy Fox Yarn Co. or company. I always say co because, you know, like when you see like Marine Corps, you don't say the Marine Corporation, which I don't think the core stands for corporation there. But like, you know what I'm saying? Like when you see core, I don't know. I just, I don't say corporation. I just say core. I don't know. Um, Sleepy Fox Yarn Company. And this is the colorway. Fair, that is like the perfect color right there. That is showing it beautifully. Um, this is the colorway fairy season, 
which is also on sale. We do have some left. I really am trying to get rid of my spring colorways so we can focus on autumn and winter. So yes, we have a pair of socks. We have socks. Um, so yeah, this pattern is the morning coffee, sorry. I have hair, there's like little like little hairs. I don't know where they came from. They're cat hairs because they're like whitish gray. I don't know how it got there. He must have messed with them somehow. So this pattern is the Morning Coffee Socks by Kay of the Crazy Late Crazy Sock Lady podcast. Um, patterns and yarn will be linked below. Everything that needs links will have links. And I know sometimes they come a day late. I'm sorry for that. <laughs> So yes, that is my first FO and I'm so excited and I really hope they fit. Um, and <laughs> one sock leg is like half an inch longer than the other. Like if you look, the socks are, and I think even like the toe, I don't know if the toe is like, no, those, those are about right. Like they're, it's just, they haven't been blocked or anything yet, but if you look, they're like half an inch longer. <laughs> but you know what? I don't think she's going to mind. Um, so yeah. So next, I, I needed just a quick project because I've really just been focusing on the sweater that I've been making my brother-in-law. And I was like, I need a fast project. I need to get something done so I can feel accomplished. Like I'm not just chugging away on a project that feels endless so <sighs> no, I'm just kidding ASMR channel <laughs> um so I decided I was going to do some washcloths now I know I love crochet I do I love crochet and they're but I don't know why I just prefer knitted washcloths more um they're stretchier I feel like they're the other ones crochet ones are just a little too thick for my liking um like I love the face pads that I made the pattern um the plush face scrubby that I loved crocheted because it's it has that texture that I really like um and the denseness that you kind of want when washing your face but for like the kids wait what's not that looks weird for the kids I really like the knitted washcloths because they're stretchy and for Colin the crocheted ones are just a little too textured I guess even though these are just like bump after bump after bump and ridgy but for his, I typically use um, a softer cotton. So this is like Lily's, or what is this? What is this? Mm, I think this is sugar and cream. <gasps> Lily's sugar and cream, or what is it? Oh, shoot. Okay, no, that is the Walmart brand. So I'm pretty sure this is like the Lily's sugar and cream. I have no idea the colorway. Um, but I really love the way this came out and I made two in this colorway. Um, this is, the pattern is grandma's, not grandma, it's grandma. There's no, it's grandma. Um, <clears throat> favorite washcloth or something like that. It's like the pattern that everybody uses. It's free and no one knows who actually made the pattern. Um, but I had, so one, two ounce ball gave me two washcloths and I still had some extra left over. Um, so there may be some scrappy ones done because I'm trying to get rid of some of my cotton because I don't really use cotton all that much. Um, so, and the Lily sugar and creams, like I just, I'm not going to use that in a garment. I'm like, this is washcloth material all the way. So yes, I have no idea what this colorway is. I have not seen it in stores for a while, 
but I mean I haven't also bought yarn very often lately um so yeah that's two of these ends are not woven in because being lazy um and then I have this one which is more for the kids it is a softer cotton and I really love this for the kids now <laughs> I ran out of yarn before I could actually finish the square, so there's a little flat edge to it. <laughs> but I really love this like rainbow one. As soon as Emma saw it, she claimed it, which is fine because it's not a finished square, so I would rather keep it myself, um, like in the house, I mean. This, I believe, is um, Hobby Lobby's what is it it's Hobby Lobby's uh, I love this cotton also don't remember the colorway I didn't have a ball band a lot of my cottons for some reason I have lost the, full, the ball bands so yeah I don't know what it is so this is like a cute rainbow one I am really loving recording on my uh, Kindle because the colors are actually showing up properly. <laughs> it makes me so happy. Um, so yeah, this is the fourth finished item. So finished object. Oh gosh, my face is itchy. Oh my gosh, going to Michael's guys is so hard right now because of all the fall and Halloween decor has come out and I'm just like I must buy it all I must buy it all but I don't I resist so we will now get into whips I do have two new whips one of which <laughs> I'm sure you probably guessed which is also in the middle of a row is more washcloths now I do know the colorway to this one <clears throat> And this is the um, Peaches and Cream brand. So this is Walmart brand. Um, it is, let's see, four ply, 95 yards. And it just says it's 100% US cotton. Made in Canada from US cotton. Um, <clears throat> and this is the colorway Yuletide. So these are going to be like Christmas washcloths that I can, I should probably have finished the row before I showed you guys this, but <laughs> so yeah, as you can see, real festive for the Christmas season and somehow I got a mess going on. So I'm just kind of going to be doing washcloths from here on because I initially planned to make <coughs> four people socks. Now, <laughs> that is what I planned a few months ago. Seeing as doing my mother-in-law's socks that I started in March did not become finished till August and hers is the smallest sock I plan on making I'm not doing socks for everybody it's not gonna happen I have to be realistic and say to myself there is no way on this green earth are you going to get four pairs of socks well three more pairs of socks done for Christmas not happening wishful thinking was what that was so the reason behind the washcloths were basically some people are getting washcloths this year. <laughs> um, but I did tell my mother-in-law that I would make my father-in-law socks because he has a lot of swelling issues with his legs and typically his socks end up being too tight. So I wanted to make him a pair um, to help with that because obviously when you knit socks you can make them any size you want and I leading into his socks is in my Lila Styles bag which is Hocus Pocus inspired which I've already been watching Hocus Pocus I think I've watched it three times already 
Um, so I'm gonna make his socks in two by two rib, basically the entire sock. That way it's stretchy and there's plenty of stretch in it. I'm making a large size, so 72 stitches, but it's going to be all two by two ribbing. So there is that give and stretch for swelling if it happens. Now, didn't get very far on this one. I just started, which what is going on with this stuff, man? I feel like the yarn is just, it's going bananas. Um, so this is, you guys have seen this colorway <clears throat> before because I showed it in an acquisitions. So I don't know. Oh, Butterfly Wings is the colorway. Um, it is by Biscotti Yarns. Um, Emma decided to cut it. So Biscotti Yarns. Um, it is an 85 Super Wash Merino, 15% wool, or nylon. Um, and the colorway is Butterfly Wings. And this is what it looks like. Oh, do you see how you can, like, see those colors perfectly? Oh, it makes me so happy. Like, that is perfect right there. Boom. Perfect. Thank you, Kendall, for giving me a good camera. Okay. So, as you can see, gorgeous color. There's, like, this amazing dark, like, tealy. That be, yeah, that's like a teal. It's like a dark greenish teal. It is beautiful with different shades of gray, white, and black. Now, like I said, it's going to be a 2x2 two two ribbed sock. So, I am going to try my 9-inch circulars again. Um, because, hold on. <laughs> because this is a 72-stitch uh, sock, I feel like it'll fit on the 9-inch circulars better than when I was doing a... 64 count sock so 72 inch 72 stitch not inch um as you can see haven't gotten very far i've gotten like one row <laughs> um so yeah there is no real pattern for this i'm basically going to just do two by two ribbing all the way until I want to do the heel flap and gusset, which at that point I'm going to use the heel flap and gusset. I really like um, the heel flap and gusset from the coffee socks pattern. So she has the 72 inch size in her pattern. So I'm just going to follow the heel flap and gusset part from her pattern and then probably just finish the two by two rib on the sock and then just do the two. And that's pretty much it. There is no pattern really. The only part of the pattern that I'm stealing is from the coffee socks. Um, so yeah, that is my other whip that I have been working on. Haven't been working on it as much, but I need to start because I really, really, really want to have that done for him for Christmas. My husband's parents have been amazing and they have helped us out in some really tough spots. And it's kind of like my little way of saying thank you to them. I know it's like doesn't compare but you know it's the thought that counts um so next is the flax sweater I have been working on for my brother-in-law mm. guys this coffee is so good the only thing is it doesn't taste good once it gets cold once it's cold you're like yeah um so are you ready to see this I have made some phenomenal progress on this let me tell you guys I have been working on this thing almost every chance I get which is probably why I needed the break from the wash for the washcloths which I should have been working on the sock but I needed that instant gratification I needed something to get done but I have been working on this like a mad woman and I am so close guys I am so close I'm so close but so far I can almost taste it so, let me get to the stitch marker. I'm trying to figure out where you guys last saw it. Okay, so, since you've last saw it, the last time you guys saw it, it was here. So, as you can see, I finished up 
the bottom. This thing is huge, mind you. So my gauge was off by one stitch. One stitch. Instead of 18 stitches per four inches, I got 17. So this is going to be bigger than I initially planned by about three inches. So, ugh. so I already planned for about five inches of ease, roughly, when I made this. Oh, and if you guys are wondering why I'm not wearing my ring, I got this nice, lovely little uh, rash going on for some reason. I don't know. I started swelling up, and anytime I swell and my ring is on, it gives me this nice little nasty rash. Okay. Um, so this thing is huge. As you can see, I made that progress. But then, but then, that meant I could go to the sleeve Woo. I know this looks crazy and I've always wondered I'm like why do they always have so many stitch markers on the sleeve because you need to really keep track of how many times you decrease which I have done <laughs> for every decrease there is a stitch marker um and I think I'm on the last decrease and then I'm just knitting away as you can see garter stitch panel <sighs> guys this thing is taking forever I am never knitting a sweater this big which mind you I am a big size but I am not as big as I thought I was and I've said this before um so most of the time I always assume I'm like the largest size I'm like a 4x 3x 4x 5x whatever when really <laughs> I'm like an extra large 2x and I'm like girlfriend why are you making yourself like you're 64 inches around when that's not even true <laughs> um so yes this because I had one extra one less stitch it means that it's going to be bigger than the size I intended so I had already initially planned for about five inches Ease. I didn't want this to be a tight sweater well because of that one stitch less <laughs> there's about three extra inches on the sweater like two and a half three extra inches of width on the sweater and I'm like Whew. luckily the row gauge didn't matter as much because a lot of the times they give you the measurements um, here let me show you so in the beginning, there is this handy dandy little chart where it tells you, you know, all the measurements you really need to watch when you're making a sweater. And it gives you each one per size that will fit roughly, right? So luckily I have all those numbers because my row gauge was off by three rows. So I added an extra three rows than her. So, <laughs> yeah, so basically I am just going by measurements at this point. I don't count the rows so much except for the decreases. That's it because the rest of it is then, okay, knit to this length after all the decreases. <clears throat> so that came in handy, um, which I am so thankful for these schematics, let me tell you because if not it would be a mess a utter mess so with that being said I am so close guys I am on sleeve island but sleeve island is not as bad as many people think it takes a while but I feel like body island is so much worse so much worse because the body I feel like you could be so close you're like oh yeah I only have four inches left to go on the sweater and then I could do the ribbing or whatever and those four inches feel like an eternity you're just like oh my god I just want to be done now like can I move on to the sleeves and these sleeves are going by really quickly especially once the decreases hit you're just like you're zooming which, by the way, knitting a sweater and constantly having to rotate this huge sweater round and round, it's 
it's a lot. So, the colors I'm using are Paintbox, uh, Paintbox Yarns, Simply Erin, in the 247 colorway, which I believe is pur Pansy Purple. And then the yellow is this guy. Also, Paintbox Yarns, Simply Erin. This is all an acrylic sweater. Um, so it will keep him nice and warm during winter, which he's a hockey fan, so I don't know if he'll wear this during hockey, but so yes, this is Buttercup Yellow. Let me see the, uh, let's see. So 222 is the Buttercup Yellow. I also have a white that I bought, um, 202 Champagne White, and also Simply Erin. And I'm thinking I might, if I can get this sweater done, like done, done, and I'm not sure how long it's going to take me to duplicate stitch, but I was thinking about duplicate stitching Vikings on the front because he is a Vikings fan. So... <sighs> It's coming along. It is coming along. But I'm going to have to get a gleaner before I send this because let me tell you guys, this, there's already pilling going on here, which I am not impressed by. Um, that's really annoying that it's, it's literally pilling as I'm making it. So, yes. That is where I am at. Whoop. That is where I'm at with the flax. Almost done. I am so excited that I'm almost done with that. You know, my bangs are finally starting to grow out and I feel like this is the perfect length for bangs because it's not, like if I wanted to do bangs, I could and they're like the long bangs, but I can also side sweep them a little bit and they're not so short. Um, because, <laughs> A week or two ago when I would do this it would like boing it would like stick straight out and it looked really funny okay so that is it for whips now I kind of want to talk about what I'm gonna be doing next because it's super exciting so I was talking to Christina right oh my god I hope I said that right Christina I'm pretty sure it's Christina the thing is I know so many Christines and Christinas that I'm now getting them mixed up. Yeah, Christina. <laughs> I know like a Chris, so my dad is dating a Christine. I know a Christine and, a, and my mom, the homeschooling mom group, a Christine, a Christina, and then there's Christina from the Blissful Stitch podcast who I'm talking about. Um, the neighbor across the street's name is Christine, so. <laughs> So if I get a Christine mixed with a Christina, I'm just like, ooh, I'm sorry. There's just so many of you right now that have the same name. But Christina from the Blissful Stitch podcast, we have been talking and she is amazing, guys. She is so awesome. Um, she mentioned to me that she wanted to do the Ripple Bralette and I was just like, girl, me too. So we are going to be doing this as soon as I get my needles. I had to order some needles in the mail because although I have an interchangeable set, they're a pain because the part where they're um, attached tends to come unscrewed. And I mean, I can tighten that sucker with the key as tight as I possibly can and it still comes unscrewed while I'm working with it. And it bugs me. So I'm getting some fixed circular needles to do this project. So this is the Ripple Bralette by Jessie Mae Mart Martinson? Martinson of Jessie Made Design. So a little backstory on why I want to do this and this may be TMI so if you don't want to hear it I'm sorry just skip forward a minute or two. Um, since being diagnosed with the gluten sensitivity that I have, I've also noticed that wearing anything tight that is elastic based or, excuse me, 
elasticy or like so I'm a big busted girl when you have a big bust your bras have like this much of a strap right and a lot of the times within that strap there's like elastic stick sticky like I don't know how to explain it but it's to make sure that your bra doesn't roll down and it keeps it in place the only thing is my skin lately has been hating that and it is giving me like a rash where my bra band sits and it's driving me freaking through the roof and yarn wool doesn't seem to bother me so I'm like well you know what conventional bras out the window this girl is making her own bras from now on because <laughs> it's so uncomfortable having to be itchy anyways and then all of a sudden your bra and even like the elastic on the underwear bands are starting to irritate me and I'm just like well I can't knit my own underwear so I'm just gonna have to suck it up on that one or find ones that are like all cotton with the elastic band wrapped in cotton kind of thing so it's not the elastic -y bugging me um so yeah that is why I want to do the ripple bralette because oh, just the itching it's got to stop it's if anybody has any type of gluten intolerance or sensitivity and has the the luck of being getting the getting the itchy part of it you'll know it is not fun it is probably one of the worst symptoms you can get I remember talking to my doctor when this was all being diagnosed and he asked me he's like well how bad is the itching and I'm like it's pretty bad like I itch all the time he's like have you tried to light yourself on fire? It was like, what? Like, I am not even kidding. He asked me if I have tried to light myself on fire. And I was like, uh, no, <laughs> it's not that bad. He's like, well, I only asked because I actually had a patient at one point whose itching was so bad and his skin has been built up such a thickness that no matter how hard he itched, he couldn't scratch it like the itch wouldn't go away and he thought he would light himself on fire I'm like well he's not that bad but yes so I'm going to be doing this soon um, which I'm really looking forward to and I'm even more excited because <laughs> I get to make the large size because it goes off your bust measurement and it says to do one that's 9 to 11 inches smaller. My bust measurement is 51. 50, 51. Um, and then to go 9 inches less. I'm going to do 9 inches because 11, I don't want it to be like skin tight, but I want it to be tight enough that it's like supportive. Um, would be so... Oh my gosh, math. 42, so it would be 42, <laughs> which would be the large size, which I am so looking forward to knitting a large because that means it will not take as long. And next up, I want to do a few things, all of them sweaters, but luckily they are for kids, so they shouldn't take very long. My niece, Heidi, she is, I believe, turning one in November I'm pretty sure she's turning one in November yeah yeah November um cuz I remember her my sister's due date was close to was in November so I'm gonna be knitting her a little baby sweater and then Emma I'm gonna knit her a sweater which is going to be the sock arm the worsted sock arms so it's like gray and then it's like rainbow on the sleeves, which I bought. This is also an acquisition, also the needles that aren't here yet. I went and got Karen cakes um, in the, um, I think this is sprinkles, rainbow sprinkles colorway. And I sent a picture of this and like the pink, purple and teal one as well. And I was like, Nick, ask her which one does she like better? And she said, the rainbow. So this will be the arms of her sweater. 
She doesn't know yet, so I'm trying to. Um, so those two, those two, <laughs> those two are the ones that I'm going to work on next once I finish this sweater because my niece, I plan on crocheting her beanie and cowl and same with my sister's stuff. Um, and everybody else is just going to get washcloths. <laughs> um, I don't know. It, it really all depends on how long it's going to take. And I mean, with the kids, with my kids, I don't have to rush it as much because I mean, I could finish it the night Christmas Eve and it's fine, you know, but everybody else's I want to have done hopefully by October. That way I can focus on Christmas stuff for my family. Um, excuse me, which means I have two months. Holy shoot. I have two months. There's no way I'm duplicating Stitch the Vikings on there. No way. Um, so yeah, I don't know why I looked back there like that was gonna tell me something. Um, but for Colin, here's another one. I have been, I love color work sweaters. I love them. They're beautiful and I want to do one so bad. So for Colin, I'm going to attempt the Mountain Mist sweater. And people say that is a very easy starter for color work sweaters. It's four colors, lightest to darkest, you know, and I think there's like three rows of color, like three sections. I shouldn't say rows, sections of color work. So I really want to do that one for him. I don't know what yarn I want to use yet for it. Um, so those are the ones that are going to be in the works next, which I'm really excited about. Um, Nick, I do want to try and Nick the, let's see, I have it here. I think it's in this one. I want to knit him a sweater as well. Um, yeah, it's actually this one on the back. It's the, I believe, Georgetown Henley. Um, which I really, I, you know, I never used to really like Tweed. But Tweed is, like, really becoming my favorite. Okay, yeah, so this one. It's called the Georgetown Henley. It's a nitpicks pattern. Um, I would do his in just one color. I would not do two. I think this is, like, holding two colors together, a fingering. <clears throat> or no, it, it's worsted. Yeah, okay, so it's cobblestone heather, so it's like two colors. But I'm going to do his in a dark gray. I'm really hoping to get that all done, which, let's be real, it's not going to happen. <laughs> like, it's not going to happen. I hope it happens. You know, because the thing is, is with the family doing everybody else's here, my kids, my husband, like I said, I can work on it until Christmas Eve. Um, everybody else is, like I said, I want to have done by October. Like, finished it by October. Um, that way I can focus on Christmas for us. Um, so, yeah. Life stuff good gravy like this is forever long podcast so life stuff not much is going on base the basics you know life kids husband cooking cleaning coffee knitting <laughs> crocheting um and I was doing the Halloween advent so that got all dyed up and I have I have all the colorways sitting right here next to me and I am so tempted to show you guys but that would totally ruin the surprise for people that actually bought them, so that's not going to happen. But I honestly love it. I love the way they came out. And it's a, it's a very wide array of colors. Like, it is not just, like, all muted grays and blues, you know? Like, it's everything. There's some dark colors. There's some bright colors, some kitschy colors. Like, I wanted it to be Halloween, and Halloween, there are darkness. There is... The fun fall feel of it. There's the kitschy Halloween feel, and that is very much portrayed in my advent. I'm so excited. 
<laughs> um, but I do want to say I'm going to try and do um, Vlogtober and Vlogmas this year again. Um, not so much vlogging every day. I mean, I might, I will probably vlog every day, but I won't upload every day. It'll probably be like every few days I upload. Um, that way I'm not <sighs> filming, editing, and uploading a video all in one day. It takes hours out of your day. And yeah, nah. So my hair is, I don't know what's going on with it. Um, so yeah, hopefully I can do that. I'm going to be having some fun stuff planned. I know me and Lacey from the Hooked on Owls podcast talked about planning stuff to work on doing like a little collab, I guess you could say, for Vlogtober or Vlogmas and stuff like that, which I am looking forward to. Um, yeah. It's just so amazing how I've made so many friends in this community. It is so awesome. I love you guys so much. <sighs> it is awesome. So life stuff other than that, I ended up getting sick. Yay, hooray me. Um, it started as like a sore throat and cough and all that yucky fun stuff. And it was weird because I was sick for so long and no one else got sick. So I chalked it up to, okay, well then it's allergies. There's no way I'm sick if I've been sick for a week and no one else has showed any symptoms. Like there's no way, right? Like as soon as I thought it, Emma complained she felt sick. And I'm like, shit. <laughs> and now mind you, when my daughter gets sick, the first day, let's just say all the food and everything in her stomach just comes out. The first time, no matter what sickness she has, the first day always throws up. So me, I'm like, okay, I'm drinking coffee at eight o'clock at night. I'm like, I'm gonna be up all sting at night because I know this girl is up and down and up and down she's crying she's upset she doesn't feel good and she can't sleep and I am someone that really appreciates my sleep so being woken up multiple times during the night pisses me off <laughs> and I would rather drink coffee and stay up all night and be exhausted the next day because I know I won't be mad because I'm already expecting it. I already know I'm gonna be tired. I already know she's gonna wake up multiple times throughout the night. Well, she wasn't feeling much better. So the second night I also stayed up, but I did go to bed, you know, before six. I was able to go to sleep around three, but then she woke me up at five. So either way, she's been sick, Colin's been sick. <sighs> Colin has been a handful, man, let me tell you. So Colin has a tendency, when he gets into something, he likes to rub it all over his body. So what? I'm almost done. Give me about 10 more minutes. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I'm sleeping because I'm sick and I'm also taking care of Emma. Colin's starting to get sick. I wake up to Colin. And I hear crunching and I'm like, what the heck is that? He took a box of graham crackers and decided he was going to put them on my floor and then stomp on them and crush them up. So I had crushed up graham crackers on my floor to wake up to. Mind you, it's not even 7.30 yet. It's like, I, I don't even, I don't know if it was like seven at that point. I think it was like 6.50, you get what I mean. It's early in the morning. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, Colin, what are you doing? Like I could barely open my eyes, I'm exhausted. And he's like, I'm wet. I'm like, what do you mean you're wet? So I'm like, how are you wet? And I reach out and I touch him. And I'm like, you're not wet, you're sticky. Why are you sticky? What did you get into? And then as I pull my hand back, I get a whiff of toothpaste. I'm like, oh no, please no. 
I oh, finally get my eyes open and seeing. He is covered, covered in his toothpaste. Well, I should say Emma's toothpaste, because it wasn't his toothpaste, it was Emma's toothpaste. So it, he smelled like that disgusting bubblegum toothpaste flavor. And he managed to get it all over his shirt, all over his arms, and he rubbed it all down his legs. And I'm like, you little turd! So I was up before 7.30 a.m. giving my son a bath and cleaning up graham crackers. And then... This just happened yesterday. Me and Emma decided to have a, wow, I just got real dark. There we go. We decided to have a, um, a sleepover party on Friday night. We, you know, stayed up, painted our nails. She did my makeup and I slept in her room with her and we had a sleepover. So the next day, I had not put the nail polish away yet. We ended up going straight to bed after that. So she brought it downstairs yesterday. She's like, oh, I'm going to paint your toenails, mom. And I'm like, okay, whatever. Like, I really don't want them done. I want you to go put the nail polish away. I don't want Colin getting a hold of it. Sorry, got cut off. Um, Colin got a hold of nail polish. And he was just being very quiet. Now, mind you, at this point, I didn't realize he had nail polish. I was like, he's being really quiet. What is he doing? I was like, Emma, just go see what Colin's doing. You know, I heard him in the kitchen, but I didn't hear him really doing things. I'm almost done. So I was like, Emma, just go look real quick for me. Like, what is he doing? Emma goes, Mom, he's got nail polish all over him. I was like, darn it. Go in there. I'm not even kidding you, this kid covered his entire legs in nail polish. He painted his new car with nail polish. It was all over the floor. When he got up, you could see his little feet prints in nail polish. And I'm just like, can't use nail polish remover on his skin. He has very sensitive skin and he has eczema patches where it's really dry. So if I would have used nail polish remover, like anybody else could use, like if you get it on your finger, you just use a little nail polish remover, get it off. But he was covered and I was like, well, there's no way I'm going to use that on his skin. It would just, it, he would be screaming and crying and freaking out and it would be painful. So I was like, Nick, go put him in the bath. I'll start, um cleaning up the floor and I was like he has to sit and soak in that water for his, at least 20 minutes to get that off <sighs> 20 minutes go by he calls me he's like it's not coming off I was like okay switch me I'll take Colin you take the floor and I'll get it off I sat there for probably a good half hour just taking my fingers and just massaging his skin getting the nail polish off and I also had like a makeup, it's like a little silicone pad that's for exfoliating your face. So it was silicone, so it wasn't going to really irritate his skin and if I like wear a washcloth. If you keep rubbing, it would just rub it raw. The silicone, you know, when you do it gently, you could just go over the same spot for quite a while and it would be fine. But it still is that action of trying to get it off. So at least a good 30 minutes into it, I finally got, I would say 98% of it off. There was like a few spots on his eczema patches that I couldn't get off and I didn't want to sit there and rub too much because it would just irritate the skin worse. So I was like, there's so little at this point. Him just wearing his clothes would rub it off and flake it off. So like this morning, there's no trace of anything, but it's just like, And he's so quiet and sneaky. He just grabs it and just disappears. So, yeah. Life. <laughs> so, that is the end of the podcast. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And I will see you guys hopefully in two weeks. If not, 
it's probably because I got nothing done but then I'll come back the following week and have a whole bunch of stuff done in one week <laughs> so I will see you guys later I hope you have a wonderful day night morning week whatever's so I will see you guys later bye